I'm Hugh Collingborn, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software. I've explained the fundamental features of Amethyst debugging in previous tutorials. Things like simple breakpoints, the watch window, the autos window, navigating the call stack, and drilling down into variables in the debugging windows and in the editor. The Amethyst Cylon debugger also supports a number of advanced debugging features, such as conditional breakpoints and trace points, and I'll go through a few of these now. Let's look at a common debugging problem. Let's imagine you some repetitive action taking place. Here I've got a simple for loop that I'll use as an example. I put a breakpoint here, but it will break every time, and I really don't want to do that. Instead, I just want it to break every so many iterations, every ten turns through the loop, say. To do that, I right-click and I select Break on Hit Count. Now, in this case, I'm going to set it to break on every 10 iterations. I start debugging, and now I can verify that it only breaks when my condition is met, on every 10 turns through the loop. But maybe you only want to break after a specific number of hits. Now, I could do that, again, with break on hit count. So this time, I'm going to set it to break only when i is 50. So I select break when hit count is equal to, and just enter the number alongside. But I might want to break when one or more specific values are met in my code. Now, to do that, I can create a conditional breakpoint. This time, I put a breakpoint with a condition that the string variable s must be equal to 2, and also that the integer variable a number must be equal to 60. And you can see I'm writing the condition just as I would in a normal action script if test. I press F5 to start debugging, and now I hit this hit count breakpoint when i is equal to 50. I carry on and I hit the conditional breakpoint when both parts of the condition are true, that is, when s is equal to 2 and a number equals 60. And notice that my flex trace statements have been printed into the docked amethyst console window down here. In addition to trace statements, you can also print information into the output window. You do this by setting a Visual Studio trace point. Now to do that, you right-click a breakpoint and you select when hit. A trace point message can either be plain text or it can include certain special values such as the current function name or even the call stack of functions that have executed prior to the trace point being hit. There is even an option to run a macro, if you need to. Now here I just want to print the function name and the call stack. If this option is checked, the breakpoint won't actually break, though the message will be printed to the output window when the breakpoint is encountered. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, however, I'm going to make it break, so I will uncheck that option. Now, notice that I've combined the trace point with my existing conditional breakpoint. And that means that my trace message will only print when this condition is met. Once again, I press F5 to debug and my normal flex style trace messages continue to appear in the Amethyst console, but my Visual Studio trace point message appears in the output window, here showing the current function name and a trace of the call stack. Incidentally, bear in mind that you can display all breakpoints together in the breakpoints window, and they may be selectively enabled or disabled by clicking the buttons and the checkboxes. And if you want to add a description, then you can do so in Visual Studio 2010 using its Edit Label option. Now, the Cylon Debugger is one of the most complex and powerful tools of Amethyst. It can even debug multiple Flash or Flex projects together, that is, the code of several different SWFs. 
and it can also debug between .NET, for example c -sharp code, and Flex ActionScript code in a single debugging session. And we have separate tutorials to explain those features. For more information on Amethyst, or to download a trial copy, visit the Sapphire Steel software website at www.sapphiresteel.com.